Hello, my wonderful and amiable listeners. Welcome to another interesting news. Nigerians President elect Ashua Jubola Metunubu has disclosed some of the things that formed the basis of his discussion with former United Kingdom Prime Minister Tony Blay on Tuesday. It was earlier reported that Blay arrived in Nigeria on Tuesday and visited Ashwa Jubala at the Defence House in Abuja. Blair's visit to Nigeria comes about a week before Ashwa Jubala Metunobu's inauguration, which is scheduled for May 29. Ashwa Jubala Metunobu, who later posted some pictures taken during Blair's visit on Twitter, said, I received former British Prime Minister and founder of Tony Blair Institute for Good Governance. Mr. Tony Blay at the Defence House in Abuja earlier today. We discussed area of mutual interest and how Nigeria can continue to benefit from the amazing work of the Institute. Earlier on Tuesday, it was reported that the United States President Joe Biden, in a statement released on the White House website on Monday, announced a nine-member delegation to attend Ashwajibola Metunobu's inauguration. The statement said the delegation, which will be led by Secretary of the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, Marcia L. Fuge, represent the commitment of the United States to strengthen ties and maintain diplomatic relations with the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Other members of the presidential delegation include David Green, charged the affairs United States Embassy in Abuja, the Honorable Sidney Kamalga Dove, United States Representative in California, the Honorable Marisa Lago, under the Secretary of Commerce for International Trade, United States Department of Commerce, General Michael E. Lagley, and Commander of United States African Command, the Honorable Eno Tibo Ebo. Director. We recall that the inauguration ceremony of Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tunubu is coming a few days from now. Tony Blair, who was a British former politician who served as the Prime Minister of the United States, United Kingdom from 1997 to 2007, and leader of the Labour Party from 1994 to 2007. He served as the leader of the opposition from 1999 to 1997 and at various shadow cabinet posts from 1987 to 1994. Tony Blay was the member of parliament for Sheetfield from 1983 to 2007. He is the second longest serving prime minister in modern history after Margaret Thatcher and, in the longest, and is the longest serving liberal politician to have held office. Tony Blay was born at Queen's Mary Maternity Home in Scotland on the 6th of May 1953. He was the second son of Leo and Azel Blair. Leo Blair was the illegitimate son of two entertainers and was adopted as a baby by Glasgow shipyard worker James Blair and his wife. Azel Kosondia was the daughter of George Kosodin. A butcher, a butcher and an orange man who moved from to Glasgow in 1916. In 1923, he returned to and later died in Shannon, County Donega in Eustace, in Shannon, Cosidia's wife Sarah Margaret, gave birth above above the family grocery shop to Blaise's mother Azel. Tony Blay's first location was when he was 19 months old. At the end of 1954, Blay's parents and their two sons moved from a place, a place terrace to Adelaide, South Australia. His father lectured in law at the University of Adelaide. It was when in Australia that Blade's sister Sarah was born. With his parents based in their family in Durham. When they later moved, Blay attended the Corista School in 1961 to 1966 
At the age of 13, he was sent to spend his school term boarding at Fetish College in Edubong for 1966 to 1971. According to Tony Blair, he hated this time at Fetis. His teachers were unimpressed with him. His biographer, John Rental, reported that all the teachers I spoke to when researching the book said he was a complete pain in the backside and they were very glad to see him see the back of him. Blair reportedly modeled himself as Mike Jagger, a lead singer of the Rolling Stone. Leaving Fetis College at the age of 18, Blair's nest spent Next spent a gap year in London, attempted to find fame as a rock music promoter. Blair became the, became the youngest Prime Minister of the 20th century after winning the 1997 general election. That is Labour's largest general election victory in history. During his first term, Blair enacted constitutional reforms and significantly increased public spending on health care and education while also introducing controversial market-based reforms in these areas. In addition, Blair saw the introduction of a minimum wage tuition fee for higher education, constitutional reforms such as devolution in Scotland and Wales, and extensive expansion of LGBT rights and significant progress in the Northern Ireland peace process while passing of the landmark Good Friday Agreement. On foreign policy, Blair oversaw British intervention in Kosovo in 1999 and Syria alone in 2000, which were generally perceived as successful. Blair was re-elected in a second landslide in 2001. Three months into his second term, Blair premiership was shaped by the September 11 terrorist attack, resulting in the start of war on terror. At various points in his premiership, Blair was among both the most popular and most unpopular politician in the United Kingdom history. As Prime Minister, he achieved the highest recorded approval ratings during his first few years in office, but also one of the lowest such ratings during and after the Iraq War, although his critics accused him of lying, deception, and eroding trust in British politics. Blair oversaw notable electoral successes and reforms, and his usually rated as above average in historic ranking of British Prime Minister. Tony Blair visited Nigeria on Tuesday and went to see the President-elect of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Ashwa Dubala Ahmed Tunubu. Tunubu said they both discussed in the area of mutual interest on how can how Nigeria can benefit from the amazing work of Tony Blaze Institute. That will be all for now. Please don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button and let us know your opinion and your thoughts via the comment section below. Bye for now and I will see you on the next news.